first topic I take up is that topic I mentioned, skepticism. It's very popular these days. It's all around us. We went through, when I was a child, existentialism. Now we have postmodernism. And we have many fashionable theories in between, rampant in the unconfident departments of American universities, and even, as I said, I fear, in law schools. Skepticism seems to me a mistake. At least the kind of skepticism that's very popular, I call it unearned skepticism. Consider the following argument about a very hot topic, <coughs> topic of abortion. A says abortion is morally wrong. It's always prohibited. B says abortion is certainly not prohibited. On the contrary, in certain circumstances, it's morally required. C says, no, you're both wrong. It's a woman's decision, but it's not a moral decision because fetus is like an appendix. Then comes D, who says, all three of you are wrong, including C. You're all wrong because there is no truth in this neighborhood. <laughs> there are no values out there in the universe. You're all making a mistake. There's nothing to think about. You're just venting your emotions. Now, the, the a point that I try and make in this book is that D's opinion is as much a moral opinion as A, B, or C's. There is no way to construe it. So it doesn't take the same moral position as C, namely abortion is permitted. If there are no moral duties, then no one has a duty not to abort. If there are no moral requirements, it's not required. Why did philosophy for so long make the mistake of not understanding what I think is a very important thing to understand, that skepticism is itself a first order moral claim. I think the problem is that people have associated realism in morality, that is a grand name for the thesis that there really are true and false statements about what people ought to do. People have associated that with a certain metaphysics. They say there can only be mind-independent universal truths about morality if there are independent entities in the universe. I call them morons, moral particles, which pulse in some way. <laughs> now, we can't make any sense of that, nor can we make any sense of denying it. The only way we can construe skepticism is as itself a first order moral position. And as such, it's sometimes right. Now, if that's your view, if, like me, you think that a skeptical claim is just another moral claim, it must be earned, then you don't get rid of skepticism. What you get rid of is bad arguments for skepticism, very fashionable arguments. People say, Cultures differ, therefore there can't be any truth of the matter. Well, if the phrase, there is no truth of the matter, is itself a moral claim, not only do cultures differ about the truth of that claim, but almost no cultures have ever embraced it until, let's say, 19th century France. We get rid of bad arguments, but then we have a challenge. What's a good argument? How should we, if we feel, as a matter of deep conviction, that something is right and something is wrong, that justice requires a decent level of health care for all citizens, what makes that true, if we think it's true? And my argument is, that there are no sufficient conditions to prove that it's true, 
and no sufficient conditions to prove that it's wrong, but they're unnecessary conditions. You have to be able to show that your conviction ties in with, reflects, and is supported by the rest of your convictions. Thank you.